Alright, let's pick on this guy. We must recognize our sins. To repent, we have to recognize our sins, and we must admit to ourselves that we have sinned. If we don't admit this, we won't be able to repent. Feel sincere sorrow for what we have done. We must feel that our sins are horrible. We must want we have stolen something, we will steal no more. Confessing our sins is very important step. The Lord Jesus Christ has given This is another step of repentance is to make restitution. This means that we must make right any wrong thing that <laughs> wow. we have done. For example, a thief should the Lord Jesus Christ will not forgive us to keep the commandments of God. We are not fully repentant if we don't keep the Sabbath day holy or obey the word of God. If we are unkind to others, we are not repentant. If we don't pray, we are surely not repentant. When we repent, our life changes, and we are getting closer to Jesus Christ. Okay, so pay attention to that last line right there. It says, when we repent, our life changes, and we are getting closer to Jesus Christ. So... You might be getting closer, but you're not there yet. So, that's a big difference between the saved and the unsaved. The unsaved are close to Jesus Christ, but they're not there. The saved have Jesus Christ living in them. Alright, so when you are born of the Spirit of God, you have Jesus Christ living in you. It doesn't get any closer than that, right? So there's a great conversation uh, between Jesus and and uh, Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, um... And so when you are born of the Spirit of God, you are born of the Spirit. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Once you are born of the Spirit, you have Jesus in you. And so it's not a matter of getting closer. You are not being saved. You are saved. Okay. This is all pretty obvious stuff, right? Uh, see if I can do that without okay. for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of God so obviously when we are born of the Spirit of God we are saved and sealed and sanctified forever right now and uh, so I mean Come on, man, what, getting closer, man, you keep repenting, getting closer. And so what I notice, uh, a lot of these, almost all, all of them, really, what they do is they say that the blood of Christ doesn't mean nothing. That's not going to cover your sin. What you must do is... Um, you must repent of your sins. That... They use that as a replacement for the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ covers all sins, right? But they don't believe in the blood of Christ. They believe that you must repent of your sins. That's an offering they give to God to cover their sins. Just like in the Old Testament, they would offer the blood of bulls and goats to cover their sins, <clears throat> right? But for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins, right? So you could, so that's the same thing that they're doing. Instead of offering the blood of bulls and goats, they're pretending to repent of their sins. Now these guys, come on, these guys don't repent of their sins. 
they don't e it doesn't even make any sense there's no way to measure that you commit a sin just say oh I repent of my sin and then the other aspect is they'll say well there's willful sin and if there's willful sin then there's accidental sin all right which is nonsense it's all nonsense and these guys that all preach it they uh, they don't live up to the standard that they preach to others. They condemn others, but they won't condemn themselves, right? So let's go. Oh, I didn't spell that right. Let's end on this one right here. Because I don't think this gets taught enough here. Jesus says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, saying that you must repent of your sins, and that if you sin, you're not going to heaven. That's what they teach. Okay. And the law uh, is going to save you if you can keep the law. So uh, it's just. Let's go. Let's do it this one. If righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, for ye neither go in yourselves. They don't live up to the standard that they are giving to others, that they are setting for others, because they still sin. They say if you willfully sin, you're not you're not saved, right? So. They don't live up to that standard. Neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So you, they won't suffer those that are struggling with their sins. The reason why we come to know Jesus Christ is because we know we need a Savior. We know we can't do it ourselves. Right? So I, I get it that these guys are saying you got to understand that you're a sinner. I get it. No, they don't. I don't think they understand it. I think that this is what they've been taught, and so they are just teaching blindly what they've been taught. But yeah, I mean, you, you, when you do recognize that you're a sinner, that you can't do it on your own, you can't save yourself, that you need a savior. That's why we come to Jesus because we know that he has done it all for us and so we take comfort in the Lord Jesus Christ because we know that he's promised that he will save us and he saves us already before we die you can't wait till after you die to be saved you're saved right now and then you have victory over death, and death shall have no power over you. So I could get into all that, but I just wanted to make this short point that um, you know the repent of your sins and this idea of coming closer. You're getting closer. Well, if you're getting closer, that means you're not there yet. And so how do you get there? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And let's go to. Let's go to uh, let's go to this one. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Once saved, always saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Without it, it is impossible to have peace.